Good evening, everybody. I'd like to call this meeting of February 1st, 2022 to order at 7 p.m. We'll stay seated for a moment of silent reflection. <clears throat> Thank you very much. We'll move to the marriage address. Thank you. So during the month of January, I attended a combination of 14 meetings between the County of Renfrew and North Carolina Lower Force and the virtual Roma conference. On January 17th, the County of Renfrew passed their 2022 budget. On Monday, January 24th, as part of the Roma Conference, I participated in a delegation with the Minister of Transportation, Carlo Malruni, along with Chief Jocko and Minister Yakubuski regarding the safety and congestion at the Golden Lake intersection. Minister Mulrooney indicated that the province had completed an operational study of the intersection regarding the issues of traffic volume, safety, alignment, and congestion. And that we had identified in our, as we had identified in our previous correspondence with the County of Renfrew. Both Chief Jocko and Minister Yakubuski spoke in favor of a plan to relieve the congestion at the intersection. We all agreed the meeting was very productive. Hopefully there will be action in the future on this most important issue. I also participated in a delegation with the Warden, Director of Property and Development, Craig Kelly, and Director of Community Services, Laura Lapine, Presenting to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, Steve, Minister Steve Clark, on working with the province to find more innovative and efficient ways of addressing the critical shortage of affordable and attainable housing in rural Ontario. The conference was well attended with 850 delegates, and the presentations were very informative. Included as information is the Roma Board's Plan of Action for 2022 is titled Opportunities for Rural Ontario in a Post-COVID World. In addition to having, in addition, I have attached the County Council Summer Report and a Progress Report of the ongoing work at CNL. And finally, I would like to welcome Cameron Montgomery as our Special Projects Coordinator for North Oklahoma Weather Force. Thank you. I have a motion that the February 1st, 2022 Mayor's Address be accepted as presented. Moved by Councillor Robinson, seconded by Councillor Schoenfeld. Councillor Buckle? Yes. Councillor Burns? Yes. Councillor Robinson? Yes. Councillor Wright, the Schoenfeld? Yes. Uh, yes. Aaron, thank you. So there are any declarations of pecuniary interest in the general nature thereof? I see none. So we'll move on to the adoption of the minutes. I have a motion that the January 2022 regular council minutes be approved as presented. Can I get a little bit of second it? Moved by Councillor Buckwald, seconded by Councillor Burns. Are there any additions, corrections, or omissions? Seeing none. Councillor Buckwell? Yes. Councillor Burnt? Yes. Councillor Robinson? Yes. Councillor Ray Kishonfo? Yes. Uh, yes. Harry, thank you. And that brings us to delegations. So I want to introduce Cameron Montgomery. Cameron Montgomery is a community development expert who has worked as a researcher for the labor market group. Renfrew and Lanark counties, as well as a project officer for the local immigration partnership with Renfrew and uh, Lanark counties. She has taught at Algonquin College Woodruff campus for 10 years and she holds a PhD from the University of Ottawa. Cameron is very involved in community projects and organizations across the valley and she specializes in grant writing and grassroots community development. Welcome Cameron and for those of you who have yet to, uh, well, you've all met her now, but uh, she brings an incredible amount of energy and enthusiasm. So, glad to have you with us, Cameron. Thank you. 
Uh, so is it better if I sit in my bubble with my mask off or if I stand up and have mask on? If everyone's behind their bubble, you can have your mask off and set up. Okay, all right. Is that a couple of that? Yeah, okay. Let's get as far away as I can. <laughs> so I do have a little PowerPoint presentation to tell something. Uh, so while that loads, I'll say thank you so much uh, for the welcome. Um, I appreciate it. I have had a lot of fun so far uh, in my first two weeks, and um, it's an amazing team of people who work here, uh, which I didn't know going into it, but I'm really <laughs> happy to see that. A really strong and cohesive team. Everyone communicates with each other really well. So I'm happy to be part of it. All right, so uh, you probably recognize this image. Uh, this is on my drive uh, here. <laughs> I took this. You can go to that side. So the first project that I've been working on uh, is, you know, looking at this Victor's property. Um, I took uh, cues from the strategic plan to develop uh, kind of a food center. Also, I've been working with a group of local farmers, um, just assessing what the needs are, because uh, basically my, uh, my strategy is to ask people in the community what they want and then work to apply for the grants to make little programs happen, because we don't want the township to be doing the legwork. We want the township just to be the administrator and then have the community deploy the projects. And then also focusing on not actually um, costing the township any money that we get all of the funds from grants. That's the goal. So with the Snow Drifters property, uh, a couple of things that we've applied for some grants uh, for is one, a safety handling course. Um, not just the, the food handling course, but also having a like a community event with uh, food and t-shirts and things like that to really entice people to come because the last time the safety handling course happened was in 2015. So that would be at the Snow Rivers property. Um, and it's called Safe Open Farm Day because a group of local farmers are organizing a kind of agro-tourism event called Open Farm Day, which is pretty exciting, which is where uh, basically it's a it's a day where anyone with their family on temporary takes can go around and check out local farms. So I think that's offers a lot of opportunity for tourism. So this uh, particular safe open farm day would be in preparation for the open farm day. So uh, the safety handling course, and then potentially some other safety kind of um, safety training and signage and things like that. The other project that we're working on is a giant uh, project with uh, OMAFRA's putting out a $250,000 grant for um, job skills in agri-food, uh, in the agri-food industry. So um, with these farmers and consultation from the Ag Leadership Committee of Renfrew County, uh, the food co-op um, and local farms, uh, basically I just pulled out a few plus for the labor market group, I did a research project where I interviewed a lot of people already, so I kind of had an idea of what the needs were. Um, and we decided to put together a pilot project that's like a one week farm camp, basically uh, advertised to young farmers or young prospective farmers um, with different sector training. So the seven days, um, hopefully, so in the budget, we have uh, like, we're still fleshing out all the details, but uh, you know, staying in local businesses, using local food, having a community, community uh, farm to table dinners every day, um, using the commercial kitchen at the Snow Rivers property um, for secondary production. So a lot of farmers are finding, you know, they're farming, if they're like cropping or something like that, they can make a lot more money if they create a secondary, you know, product like um, pickles or something, right? So uh, secondary production is going to be a main focus, cropping, marketing, uh, and then a focus on meat, and then possibly egg grading, but we're still looking at that. Um, yeah, so this will be part of developing the Snow Drifters property as a food center, and also business incubator for agri-food businesses, which was in the strategic plan. So looking for more funding for those projects, uh, and there's a lot coming up. So I have to be with the Rural Economic Development um, Board and yeah, next slide. And a community garden project, but I haven't found a good uh, grant for it yet, but I will, I'll find a good grant for it. Uh, so the next project is the Mogul Lake Skating Loop. So a community group reached out to the township about building a skating loop that they would maintain themselves and asked if the township would cover them in terms of liability. So 
that's a project that we're working on. And the Wilkins Trail. So I met I met with the Mennonites, and um, I saw the museum that they're working on. And I have a meeting on February twenty eighth with uh, the community group that is working on the modified triathlon. So I'll be focusing on that coming up. So this is a grant that we applied for on Monday. Uh, it's a crossroads transformation project, which is basically funding for an aesthetic upgrade to the main street and Lake being the only kind of downtown area that was obviously the focus. So um, it would be $54,000 to um, renovate the community center, but only aesthetically, not, you know, uh, more like not, not construction of the inside or anything like that. But I will look for, uh, I want to look for um, uh, some grant money to put push button doors on the community center, but that this grant won't cover that. Uh, but it'll be just a facade upgrade and then also signage for the food bank um, and uh, art by, by local artists. So that's Jenny Townsend in Greenville, who's done a couple murals in Greenville recently. And then this is Sylvia Tenesco, who's an artist from North Carolina Golden and Course, an Indigenous artist. So uh, we would, in the grant, we would hire um, Ottawa Valley Community Arts to actually organize all of the artistic part of it and all of the community seeking and hiring the artists and all that kind of stuff, we would just manage the administration of the place. Okay, Township Together Community Day. So the uh, uh, fire prevention officer said that she would like some funding to um, give out fire alarms and safety alarms and uh, fire extinguishers to people, which she already does, but she's looking for some more money for that. So um, I saw this uh, grant that was for kind of an activity that was by, um, sponsored by Hyperlon. And um, it was for safety activities and workshops. So what I did was I just created four day events and then I built in a budget to give away stuff to <laughs> like give away merch essentially so um it's each event can each event basically will sponsor a community dinner um health and wellness workshops fire prevention home safety bike safety um and then uh they'll have swag bags that have like smoke alarms and co2 alarms and stuff for up to 100 people per event and there'll be two a spring uh one and a fall one at the reagan community center and the um so um, I'm in a you know another hat. I work a lot with the Phoenix Center in Pembroke, um, which is a like a giant local not for profit, and they do youth um, programming. And so I reached out to the Phoenix Center because they're applying for a really ginormous, like multi million dollar grant for the from the United Way, which they'll probably get because they're. Just like a highly vetted organization, they're one of the only organizations that meets all the criteria because there's just not not that many not for profits that have payroll and that kind of thing in the area. So I asked the Phoenix Center if we could kind of piggyback on their programming. And what they're going to do is, if they get the funding, they're going to hire a rural outreach coordinator um, who will organize programming. So just an extension of what the Phoenix Center offers in Pembroke. At, community centers uh, in North Alona. So they do cooking classes, um, outdoor fitness, uh, health and wellness. Um, they have a gym. They have, like they have a whole gym facility and like their own giant kitchen facility. Like they just have like a ton of it. But basically it, it'll be the start hopefully of a partnership where they can just um, provide it. And it's all free for the community. So it'd be pretty awesome if we get it. And then the last thing is the Water and Dirt Festival. So this is pretty well underway. This is being organized uh, primarily by Colin Coyle and Petalawa. Uh, so it's the kayak fishing tournament at Mills and Bishop Park on August 6th and the doggy paddle on August 14th. That's it. Does anyone have any questions? The little guy that's make up a little Food trays. Yes. Did you have a food safety family course? Probably not. Maybe <laughs> that was a food safety family course. <laughs> yes. Do you have an email now, like associated with Monthly Yeah, so it's coordinator at. Um,
Because if we have some ideas or some contacts. Yes, yeah, so like please, please uh, put me in touch with people who have ideas because I don't want to invent anything. I just want to talk to people who want to do something and then I just like find the funding and then maybe hire a professional to you know make it happen, like hire a coordinator or something like that if that's the barrier. Because like there's a lot of people who are older who have good ideas, but they don't maybe have the energy to like do it, but they they can get together the right people to make it happen. So I just want to say great launch. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty exciting. And they also it's the the excitement in what you're doing that sort of comes across, which I think will engage the community as well. I love applying for grants. <laughs> it's better than the lottery. <laughs> like the odds are a lot better. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> and it's an opportunity to bring really cool stuff to the community. So. Excellent. With the grants, you think you get 90% of them, 75 of them? You never know. Really. You know what? See, uh, this is the thing. This is the first time I've been able to apply as a municipality. And so the odds are way better. So, you know, it's pretty exciting. <laughs> we'll see. I, I'd say it's like probably about 60% usually. But uh, from the municipality, maybe it'll be higher. Just that, well, thank you very much. Presentation was excellent. And uh, yeah, you certainly have gotten off to a terrific start. Just a thought, um, Shaw Woods always does, well, at least without COVID, does their uh, maple syrup uh, production in the spring, and they open it up to the public in your partnership with the Phoenix Center. What a great opportunity to bring some of those youth out and expose them to uh, that whole process and the trails and everything else that Shaw Woods has got. That's actually my notes, but I didn't say it. Shaw Woods, Shaw Woods, uh, and Lori Johnson actually in her budget with the Phoenix Center is applying for like buses to take the kids around. Like that's how much money they have. They're just, you know, so hopefully we could do some summer programming where there's there's rural programming, but then the giant programs in Pembroke can come out and join and you know do stuff together. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Any more questions for Kevin? Okay. I have a motion that the special projects coordinator presentation be accepted as information by Council Member Schoenfeld, seconded by Council Buckwell. Council Buckwell? Yes. Council Burns? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Reggie Schoenfeld? Yes. I mean, yes. That's carried. Thank you. Item number 7.1 is the conveyance of land for the Wilkins Road. I have a motion that council accepts this report as presented and further directs staff to proceed with the transfer of lands. Can we have a second? Moved by Council Burns, seconded by Council Barkin. Comments or questions? Council Edward Chenko. They're not widening, widening the whole Wilkins Road just for the turn of Southrex. Is that what you envision? So with, with the widening of the road, the plan is to make the road um, passable for the snowplow equipment because that end of the road isn't quite as wide, but we believe we have most of the material there to work on the road yet. So uh, what we could do is just putting the snowplow turn at the end. So we're assuming that we would be about 66 feet wide at the end, but we're not going to make a four-day highway one there. Yeah, okay. Thank you. That's a great. Is that, is that road plowed up right now? Presently, we turn around on private property oh, okay. because it is a forest road, so we don't own anything off the travel portion of the road, which is not really good for a municipality because we really don't have the right to put snow in really far off the road. So, this will allow us to put a proper turnaround in the 66 foot turnaround. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Senior Man, Councilor Buckwell? Yes. Councilor Burns? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Ray Pichonko? Yes. And yes. Very Thank you. Good. <coughs> Item 7.2 is a uh, zoning amendment. I have a motion that Council accepts this report as presented and further directs staff to 
process the zoning amendment application. I'm going to move to the second, moved by Councilor Buckwell, second by Councilor Robinson. Comments or questions? Councilor Rafa Would it be prudent to put a, a time limit on the ability to live in a temporary trailer? Like, does that matter? Should we do something like that? Uh, that could be included if that was all structured. I'm, I'm just thinking, I think that's an important thing to do because if we don't have a deadline, then we could stay there for a while. Mm -hmm. no, that's a, that's not to stay there forever. Yes, sir. Normally, those types of agreements have a time limit on them. Do you know on how long uh, a suitable time, like a year or two? Uh, sometimes it's two years, sometimes it's three years. I would imagine one of the challenges right now is A, finding the contract, and B, making sure the contract is in material. Mm -hmm. So if a three year agreement would provide them with uh, an extra yeah. year. Sure. I'd be in favor of so, a three year time. Uh, Councilor Robinson. Um, the other thing was um, this is the right one I'm looking at. This is not the can yeah, the kennel. Is they, did they did you say what size of kennel? Uh, they don't say what size, but that in their letter, um, they will have a maximum of 10 dogs at one time. And the total, it, it does give the total acreage. Uh, so presently, the, the property is nine acres. Uh, now, they do uh, have plans to separate two one acre of lots, which would have uh, seven acres remaining. Um, and in their application, um, they do mention that um, the plan structure will be a minimum of 60 meters only from any uh, other lot lines. Council Red, something. Um, just a question. How can they have zero white of station? What is the civic address? <laughs> it, it's a vacant piece of it's a vacant man. Oh, so, so when I have my number hasn't been. Oh, um, okay. Because I was just because <laughs> I've never seen zero before. Anyway. No, I've seen it a couple of times with That's... some of my clients. <laughs> okay. Thanks for that. <laughs> well, I like in their application, they indicated that they're going to put a fence up around the, uh, the Catalan area and they're going to plant some trees as a sound barrier and visual barrier. Mm -hmm. And they've had no complaints where they're currently operating in terms of so I think there's some level of comfort there. Councillor Robinson. Um, what about the the, the residents close to that area? <laughs> so, so this is a planning application. So part of the process there will be public meeting. Um, and we will have to advertise in the newspaper uh the public meeting. So Neighbors would be would have an opportunity to make any comments. Any other questions? Seeing none, Councillor Buckle. Yes. Councillor Burnt. Yes. Councillor Robinson. Yes. Councillor Rector Chonko. Yes. I mean, yes, that's carried. Thank you. Item 7.3 is a request to purchase shoreline road allowance. I have a motion that council approves the sale of shoreline road allowance adjacent to the property owned by WGU and Lolai Pesley, described as part lots four and five, concession one, geographic township of Lower Falls. Can I get a move in a second? Moved by Councilor Bird, seconded by Councilor Buckle. And I apologize if the owners are listening for the pronunciation of your name. Uh, comments or questions? Seeing none, Councillor Buckwell? Yes. Councillor Burnt? Yes. Councillor Robinson? Yes. Councillor Rector Schoenfeld? Yes. And yes, Carrie, thank you. Mm -hmm. Item 7.4 is the bulk voucher report. I have a resolution that council accepts this report as information. 
And I have moved and seconded, moved by Councilor Buckwell, seconded by Councilor Robinson. Comments or questions? Councilor Buckwell. Uh, just one, just to confirm a couple of things. Because it talks here about college fees, but it's on site. I'm assuming that's just for in rentals. Okay, so um, if, if the if we were talking program at the Burns Road transfer station, there would be college fees. Okay, just the, the way I under, understood the report was that it would be just at the uh, mm -hmm. shot the oil station site at eight three. We were we contemplating two locations or just the one. So in 2021, the program was offered at Front Road and at Shawwood, I mean, uh, the Ottawa Valley Police Department Center. Just for the council's information, the $200 is, is college and tipping fee, so that tip, tipping fee would still invest the $200. Even if it's at their own site. Okay. Yes. I think, can we bring up the report, please? So will staff be bringing a recommendation forward on uh, the voucher program? Okay, yes. Yes, the board will take that and then the will report. That's right, the chart. And um, would there be bin restrictions? I guess that would be part of the report. Right. Did you throw anything in the bin or is there going to be like? So uh, there is a list of items that they will accept. Yes, in the bin. Okay, thanks. Councilor Robinson. I was just curious, you said 44 residents um, deem their voucher. How many vouchers did we send out? Um, so we would have sent out probably approximately 3,000 to 3,500. And so that was so just a small percentage. Then. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I recall that they were better. But when Councilor Perry. With this plan, everything goes around the valuation, you know, all the way up to the room, right? So, we'll include that in the report that comes back to council. Council will be given options. Okay. Any other questions? Can, uh, council will be I'm just wondering, do we need to run it year round? Because I really don't see a lot of people doing bulk type stuff in the winter. I'm thinking the summer season, you know, yeah. even a couple months of the summer would probably be adequate. Uh, if I may through the mirror, like something like I'd be seeing the beginning of cottage season mm -hmm. and maybe till like, you know, Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. <laughs> or, sure. or, or one yes. suggestion of staff was that uh, we would run it four times, four times a year um, in May, June, July, and September. So that would cover the spring opening of cottages and spring cleanups, two times during the summer, and one time in the fall. So like for the full week, the full of those months? Or um, just one day or, or one week in those months. I think that's I'm, I'm just sorry. Yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking that if, it, if it's being done at the recovery center, what would you just leave it in there for the full four months? And if I made through the mirror when it was full, they'd empty it. Yeah, and anyway. mm -hmm. and you know. I'm just thinking, like from my point of view, it might be it would be less confusing for me that I know I could take it there from this state to that date and just give mm -hmm. my voucher to the landfill. You know. I think we would I would prefer starting smaller. I think we have to be cautious 
and aware of the fact that if it's open for if it's open season for four months, people are going to start. You're going to have somebody with a big trailer who's going to start a business picking up large items from other neighbors and dropping them off. And it could get costly. We have no idea of what this will cost. It's much easier to to budget if it's a smaller time frame than if we open it up to a large time frame. And we don't have a budget line item for it yet. So that's that's my concern. And I like I say, the thing we have to remember, we had 3,000 to 3,500 vouchers went out and we had less than 100 that were used. But of those that are used, every one of those other taxpayers pays for that person's free disposal. That's the right question. Well, in other municipalities, they actually have um, waste recovery that gets picked up at the end of the driveway sometimes. And I'm not sure if somebody would make a business out of that because you still need the coupon or you still need whatever we're gonna send out in that first um, set of taxes. The other thing too is maybe um, there was a small amount because there was a fixed time, right? So if I haven't opened up my cottage or done my like, renovation or closed it up, I might not have been here that weekend or that time when to do it. So it, it may increase it. I, I just think sometimes it's important that we, you know, give back to our township because lots of people do complain about the fact that that uh, other townships and municipalities do have, uh, you know, pick up at their driveway. And this way, to me, it would allow people to use the service and make it a little more flexible. Having this, the dates too, I guess, would work too and provide more flexibility too. I mean, we're going to send out one voucher with one set of taxes and it's going to explain on the voucher, these are the days you can take it. That's a problem. Well, I was wondering whether or not we were, if we were to say the first week of each month, in from May to October, that that's what it would be allowed. So not only um, our resident will know that first week, that's what you have, but also um, for the Ottawa Race Recovery, they can plan to have the things available during that time. A matter of us, it, it's, it's, it's their planning as well. And we're doing it. Well, just because we've been discussing this, what we did with the weeks is we tried to be close to a holiday. Okay. So that, you know, May 24th, Canada Day, Civic Holiday, and Labor Day, so that the people that do come to their seasonal homes are most likely to be around those weekends. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the reasons why we, we chose those dates. Okay. Well, then I think we could follow through on that. Absolutely. I'm just wondering, is that something that would work for the recovery center with an additional cost for moving and replacing and moving away the room? Or would it just be cheaper just to leave it there? So that would be information we bring back because leaving the bin, for example, for six months may involve a rental fee okay. in the bin city, whereas tipping the bin means they can put the bin back in the service. Okay. So okay. we'll bring that information forward. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Henry, did you have a... It was, we were, they're all on the same team here. Okay. <laughs> I thought I saw your hand go up again. I did before, but you felt good. Councilor Buckwell? Uh, yes. Councilor Byrne? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Rachel Schoenfeld? Yes. And yes. Thank you. And 7.5 is the outdoor skating rink request. We've heard a little bit about it from Cameron. I have a motion that council accepts the report on a skating rink and approves extending municipal insurance coverage to the rink with the requirement that all insurer recommendations are adhered to and further that the township welcomes and is thankful for the initiative brought forward from the Golden Lake and Area Property Association for this community engagement opportunity. Moved by Councillor Robinson, seconded by Councillor Mike Bichon for comments or questions. Councillor Burke. So if I may, Mr. Mayor, this is going to be uh, set up there by the boat launch on Island View Drive. I believe that's what it said, yes. This time I lived in that area for quite a while. Sometimes the ice can't be very good because of the current of the river and stuff there. 
Like I see lots of vehicles going underneath the ice when you went up to the fish tax. And out there right now, there's a there's a wall of ice built up out there, fireplace. Like it just there, there's better spots on the lake because of the current that comes in there sometimes. That's the only because I live in the area on the island. I know it's not a good spot on the on the lake right there. I would assume that part of the insurance company's uh, recommendations would be that someone would have to check ice depth and the conditions. And I'm just assuming, but Councillor uh, Buckle. Um, I agree with Councillor Burnham, but it depends on where you go to. Uh, if you go out front of Boat Launch and go off to the left, then yes, there's definitely current. But if you went up along the shore to the right, I think there'd be lots of them that are in. Because you can't do it right there anyway, because so many results come across there too. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to go off more to the right of that or to the left. And I think that I think that would be okay there because there's not a lot of current and shallow. It's that current is more out farther. Um, but, but to the right, that right now, that is where the water well, is going across it. It must be sweet through that. Yeah, we're pressure interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there should there should be enough room between I don't think so. Yes, and, and just to answer Mayor Rose's question. So one of the uh, requirements is that the mm -hmm. the ice is inspected and documentation is kept to ensure that the, the ice is thick enough and in good repair. Council Robinson. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Council Buckle, uh, do we have a costing on the insurance condition? Yes. Uh, okay. Um, so it's just a matter of extending our liability uh, coverage. So there would be no additional. So no cost no additional. Cost. Okay. Oh, well, yes. Councilor Burt. Yes. Councilor Robinson. Yes. Councilor Reggie. Yes. Thank you. Item 7.6 is the uh, purchase of the single axle comb. I have a motion that council accepts the public works truck purchase report and withdraws direction to proceed with the purchase of the 2020 single axle truck. And further, that council directs the CAO to proceed with the purchase of the 2021 tandem axle plow sander truck for $307,000. $350.55, not including HSD, from Abby Schmidt Canada Inc. or ELP. I have a mover and a second. Moved by Councilor Clark, one second by Councilor Robinson. Comments or questions? Councilor Robinson. I wasn't here, but I heard all about it. Um, can you give us a little bit about background why the withdrawal? And... So, through the mayor, uh, I voiced a couple of concerns with the truck in regards to the, the absolute in the front end and the foul um, with the lower horsepower. And in the end, I said that I really wanted to make sure my superintendent was really uncomfortable. One of the other questions was the back plate, the back plate can. That actually can fit on any truck that can fit on that truck. Um, he was not comfortable, and I'm not going to be here driving that truck. And I, I got a lot, I want to support my workers. So I told my work, I told my superintendent the next day, is there a truck on the ground that's a tandem that you can put the same equipment on? And we found one. So um, the, just for the count, Council of Robertson's information. The other truck was a really good deal and something we should bring forward to the council. But again, the person wasn't comfortable that we found a truck that is on the ground that could be a July uh, delivery. Um, because truck building and securing can be anywhere from one to two years and possibly three now. So finding a truck on the ground that's the same spec as the trucks that we have and then getting the equipment on it, the equipment would be on the truck in probably July, so it was delivered in the month of July. Our truck that we ordered last March has arrived at the LP now. It has to wait in line until it gets the equipment. This one's already going to be in line as soon as you, if, the, if there's a purchase. 
So the cost to council in the, in the world of financing trucks would be $30,000 this year, and then $40,000 for the next um, nine years. That we suggested to council, that council agreed in the last meeting that financing things over a long period of time is better than you know sometimes going out and trying to find four hundred three hundred fifty thousand dollars. So it it wasn't it's not something we're pushing on council. We're just giving the information back if you're interested. It's been worked into the budget right now. It doesn't have a big effect on the budget. It doesn't have a large capital purchase. It's more it's an investment over the future. So. You will be sourcing a truck in the first year of the new council. Um, this puts something in place, and the way you are with your trucks, the new council coming in in their four years will not purchase the truck. It'd be after, after their four years, the rotation starts again. Seeing no more questions, Councillor Buckwald? Yes. Councillor Burt? Yes. Councillor Robinson? Yes. Councillor Richard Tonko? Yes. Okay, yes. Jeremy? Thank you. And that brings us to 7.7, which is the uh, draft budget. I'm going to ask staff if we can uh, bring up the budget, please. So first, we'll look at the budget notes. I'll, I'll get a mover in a second. Oh, first, just to get this uh, on the floor. Moved by uh, Councillor Reggie Tonto, seconded by Councillor Byrne. Okay. okay. There has been some revisions to the budget and the budget notes since it was provided to Council. So the budget that's presented uh, has a surplus of $171,008. Uh, the budget that's presented has a 0% uh, uh, growth tax levy increase, a uh, 0% plus growth tax levy increase. Um, any changes from the January 18th uh, draft budget that was presented to council uh, has been highlighted in the orange. So they're easy for you to identify them. Um, also included for council's information was the amount of the reserves as of December 31st, 2020, and uh, uh, the tax rates for the uh, the rest of the Brantford County lower tier municipalities for 2021 for council's information. Okay. Uh, since the budget was uh, provided to council, uh, three items have been added, um, one being a budget line for the special projects coordinator. The amount of a couple thousand dollars. Um, this is for um, one thing that uh, at least as a project coordinator has been working on is the council newsletter. Um, so that mm -hmm. would give her the working capital to do that and some additional smaller projects. Um, also, um, as she explained tonight, she has been uh, submitting uh, numerous grant, grant applications. Uh, the ones she submitted so far uh, hasn't required uh, municipal funding, um, but um, there will come a point where uh, her, the grant application will require uh, a, a portion of the funding to be provided by the municipality. So in this budget, we have included a line item in the amount of 50000 um, And one of the reasons we did that was, was because at some point, uh, this is in the, the municipal election year, at some point, Council may become laid back. And um, at that point, we wouldn't be able to revise the budget uh, to, to provide that budget. Okay. Also, uh, another thing that has been included in the agenda for tonight is um, mandatory uh, training certification for fire departments. Um, our fire chief uh, was present at a meeting today with the fire commissions and that training uh, will uh, will be passed, will be approved and will be required. Okay. Um, the cost of the training out at $3,000 per member. We have 30 members. So that's going to cost $97. <coughs> okay. um, the training uh, will have to be 
be done within the next four years. So we are suggesting that uh, for the next three years, we train Kenyan member of the year. That's thirty thousand dollars. And then there was a number of items that uh, have been brought up at the January meeting um, that uh, I brought back for discussion and council direction tonight. Um, one item that was discussed was the cost of living allowance for council. Um, I had included a 3% increase in the, the draft budget. This translates into a $2,386 cost. Um, so that's one item that council will need to provide direction for tonight. Um, also, um, under discussed was the concrete pad of uh, road transfer site. Um, that had a cost of $25,000. Um, and there was discussions on the two speed signs that were included in the budget that uh, had a cost of $5,000. Um, also, there was um, some more projects that uh, there was this, some discussion on, but no direction was given. The Jessup Road project uh, it, it was the first phase, the costing was $100,000. And then we had previously budget the prior year for the New Line Road and for the New Lake Road. Um, the amount here I had included for sixty-five thousand dollars for the line, but uh, after some discussion, uh, it will take some additional funding to do that road. Um, if we would want to include it in this year's budget, so one hundred fifty, one hundred fifteen thousand uh, is more in line with the work that's required. And then um, another item for discussion was additional funds for research. So I'd like to go back to the start now. <clears throat> Once the council makes decisions on these, do we need a separate uh, resolution for each item? I would say no. So uh, the resolution says that uh, the budget will be amended as directed by council. So council will give me direction and I will amend the budget. And then we'll come back with the amendments. So that's true. And uh, so the budget is scheduled to be presented at uh, for next week uh, on uh, the February 8th. Dr. Buckle. Uh, yeah, just one question. Uh, I know further on the agenda we have the announcement that we're getting uh, a couple grants that were more partial with grants. Yes. Are those the yes. work in the new yes, budget? Yes, in the draft budget. Okay. So we go to the top one, uh, the special project coordinator budget for 12,000. Any comments or questions? Just topic. so those haven't been added yet. Uh, so I have, so those three items have been added on the budget. So uh, with those added, we still have a surplus of 171 bucks. Okay. okay, thank you. So, but but that they require councils. Right? Yes. <laughs> so, councils okay with that one? Mm -hmm. And show of hands. The prospective grant opportunities of fifty thousand, and I understand why you're going this way because we could be in lame duck after May, and at least that this way there's some money there if we have to contribute to a grant application. The money's in place. Is council in favor of that one? That's good. The mandatory certification training. This is something new that just came out, and uh, I'm not sure if you would have the information or maybe uh, Council Buckwell. Does does this mean they're requiring our firefighters to have the same level of training as a full time firefighter, or is this? Which else? Uh, I don't have that information today. Sure. Um, what the actual training is going to be yet uh, hasn't been set. Uh, based on the last email that I was concerned that I was involved with, uh, but there was there was or is a comment period uh, for the new regulations. But there will be regulations come that there will be some form of certification required, uh, and it's going to be something that's beyond what we're going to be able to determine. So you're going to be looking at sending firefighters away uh, 
to one of the private facilities or sorry, contract facilities with the uh, fire college uh, to get that training out of spent. Uh, what it's going to entail, I don't know, it's still the upper grounds. But yeah, it is coming. Sounds a bird. Is that for all the firefighters or is that just a new firefighter? That's for everybody. For everybody. Even the old farts like me. And sorry, Council Bird. And how often would this have to be done once they're trained or would we have to go back every time we use that? That we don't know. I suspect mm -hmm. it's going to I suspect it'll be one time certification training. because uh, even the other NFPA training where you get your actual seals mm -hmm. is one and done. And then you just do your, your internal training. I suspect it'll be one time only, but I, I can't confirm it. Thank you. Yeah, I imagine there'll be more information coming. I did get the email just to say that this was going to come into force and that there was that window of uh, opportunity to send in comments. And I'm sure after that period, then we'll get in a lot more detail. Yes. So, Council's okay with that one, by right? show of hands. That's good, okay. Uh, cost of living allowance. Council okay with that one? Well, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, boy, that's, that's a red Just in an effort to try and save money, I mean, I'm okay with not getting the cost of living loans. I mean, this year has been a unique year as long as the past year, too, where, you know, it's like we're not going away as much. Lots of our meetings have been Zoom. You know, I'd rather see those monies go towards a firefighter and their certification. That's just me. Councillor Burke? I'm okay with not getting any of them this year. That money can be used in other states, other places. Councillor Allison? Um, my personal thought is leave it as it is, and I'm sure we can take the money from other areas within the council budget. Councillor Buckle? Uh, I'm reluctant to take it out because, let's face it, the, the 3% isn't going to make any of us here rich. Um, but the thing we do have to remember is this is going to apply through to the next council coming in as a book. And if you want to get qualified people, they need to be done fairly. One of the things I think we, we should be doing this year before we wind up uh, <coughs> the bachelor campaigns is uh, we should have a review of our of what council makes uh, from an outside source. To make recommendations as to what we should be doing with our style, we can take it right out of our hands. They come back with a recommendation and we should vote on that. But I think at this point for the budget, I think we leave it status quo. Because um, again, this is going to be affecting the future council too. Well, and, and I, I tend to agree. I, I think we should leave the 3% in there. Uh, if we wanted to do something that's supposed we could do something similar to what BB did, it's they, they left their increase as is, but then they decided they would donate that back to a special event or a special project. Mm -hmm. And that way it doesn't affect the next council coming in, but it uh, allows us not to uh, deal with that 3% increase. Uh, I also uh, I also do agree with, with Council Buckwell and it's something that a lot of councils do during the four year term, usually towards the end, is uh, have a review of the remuneration to see if it's still in line with uh, other municipalities and uh, other councils. So I guess my question is, is that something that the service review could cover? So uh, the mayor could ask that question. One of the components that uh, we need to do the service review is equity. And you can include that in the entry, which again would be the third part. So, once again, I guess I'll, I'll ask for the show by show of hands. Um, if Council would agree to uh, leaving the truth present there. Oh, that's good. Concrete pad at the Bird Road transfer site. 
Council Burn. This is something I, I disagree with right now because it's been it's been in place for probably two years. I know the big brush or stuff there. And the first year it was in place, I did get attacked by people when I was there, but it's all gone by and people thought Mr. Gones got a Mr. Cutting something now or found another spot for it. So at this time, I that money could be used another spot. Yeah, I got, I got thinking about this too, because when I first seen concrete pad, of course, I'm discussing, I thought it was a pad to underneath the, the compactor. Then when it was for the uh, for the yard waste, I don't see a need to have it at that site. Uh, because again, you're not only looking at the cost of that, but now if you're going to put your materials there, you also have to maintain them. Right, so you're also going to have to pay the cost, equipment costs into that. When the waste recovery center is already set up for it, it's where it's going to wind up anyway, and they turn it into great compost. So, I, I, I don't think it's something we need to be providing uh, at Burn Brooks. I know that because we don't provide it here. No, was that mm -hmm. no, I would echo what comes with what Paul was saying is that um, for everything else that we're doing, this money could be allocated to some of the road projects that we have. But what I'm hearing is council doesn't want to do this one, correct? By a show of hands. Okay, got that, uh, Michelle. Speed signs. One, two, three, none. <coughs> Councilor Robinson said two. Councilor Buckwell's up to two. Oh, no. Any any other thoughts, comments? I, I just I think they're a good idea because we have seen in places where they do have an effect on people while we're there, but they have to be there. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a lot easier if we have to that again we talked about it about putting up either posts or other places now that that we still can move them around if we want to, but without the expense of a trailer. Um, I think it's a good investment to try and slow some people down. Council Bird, I have to agree with that because. When the, when the sign is at Google Maple the Reds and the sign makes a difference to people coming in and doing it. Like they, they were flying down past the church at 100, and, and when they see the sign, they actually show that. So they, yeah. do, they do work for under an air for a short time. Shoot down a fake camera on top of it. That's a record show. This is just with the technology of the sign. Can you set like the idea, like could you set it from 80 to 70 if you wanted to, or like with those variables? I mean, so, so through the mayor, we could adjust the sign to the road. Yeah. Speed on the road. Thank you. And the sign, it does collect data that can be forwarded to the police, or the sign is capable of collecting data. Professor Robinson, now even the one on that cemetery, I mean, that does have an impact of keeping the, the, the speed down. So I think having it, and if we're able to rotate it, I think we'll slowly start changing those driving habits. Yeah, because I know the residents of Traymore Road would like to see one on their road. For sure. That's something. Yeah. Councilor Burke, you had a. I know. Just a, just a mound of traffic now on Lakeway Road in the last two years. It's just. Oh, even, even coming out here tonight, like it's it's getting traffic going the whole way. Like it's not really not a traffic. It's on the There's a special going on on the reserve. Sorry, it was my outside voice. Oh, so yes. Okay. The price okay, is so. Is council in agreement then for two speed signs at five thousand dollars each? That's carried. And. Jessup Road. Jessup Road. Jessup Road is that actually chipped and gravel, or is it chipped all the way down to the end? I haven't been on it in a That's that's chipped all the way down to the lake. Straight to the lake. Yeah. Yeah. That's a bird. Oh. What what would it cost to grind that up and put a bit of gravel on that then? For this year, like just to, since that bad of shape, since we got that level. Well, 
I'm not sure if it's even in that bad of shape. We had one letter from one resident. Um, I did ask the uh, road superintendent if he thought that that road needed immediate attention. And his answer was there's word, roads that are in worse shape than that. And I just go back to the fact that this one isn't on our asset management plan, it's needing to be replaced where others are. And I think if we start drifting away from our plan, then it's going to be hard to bring some of the other roads up. So, uh, Councillor Robinson first, and then Councillor. No, I was going to ask our CEO's um, opinion on that because I would adhere, adhere to your comment that there are some roads that are much more needing um, servicing at this point in time also or whether or not if it's just a portion of the road what would that entail so through the mayor and the people pull that in your question yes the road is in various disrepair in various areas of the road so it's probably going to take one third of the road to make it better and everything else will be better. Um, second part of your question, just yeah, I yes. the question, cut that part. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I need to, I need to repeat. Oh, okay. okay. So it was now I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the first part was your opinion just on the road itself because I, we've heard what the super has said so and, and i certainly agree with, agree with what the super said but there is definitely roads that we have that are in disrepair council went back three years ago we brought forward a 15 million dollar deficit in the roads the ones that never even made it to roads mm -hmm. study. so those roads were considered so far gone that they were beyond putting into the study because there was no so you already have a fifteen million dollar deficit, so picking roads, you know, say I'm going to do this road, you have to, or you should have a plan, and your plan is your road needs study. So doing roads on on that would be a good thing. Now, one councillor did suggest, what about just putting the road back to gravel? As council have learned over the last three years, it's a progressive world. It's a good thing to do because you can slowly build the road up. But if you put it back to gravel, you have to expect that the residents are going to want it to be the same, the same road that it was, even though it wasn't a really good road. So you're still doing an investment if you put it back and the gravel is spreading over for more years. So I I would suggest. That council stay firm with um, planning, which is long range planning, your asset management plan, which you're doing this year to, to finalize, is going to dictate the roads that you, that you should do. So, my suggestion would be to get a plan, a quality of plan. Otherwise, you're just going to be picking things out of the sky all the time. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so I'd have to echo Councillor Sprint's um, comments. I think we have some roads that we were going to do this year, and that's in our budget plan. If anything, these three roads, and we know last year what happened when we thought it was going to cost this much and it cost so much more, mm -hmm. we had to take away some of the roads and put monies to that. So what I'd rather see is those three roads, the values that we've given them, put that into like a roads reserve, and if something happened where we needed additional money because um, the quotes or the tenders or the RPs came back so much higher. At least we do have some money in reserves. And, and let's face it, if at the end of the year something happens and if we have additional monies left over, I'm sure we can find somewhere to put that, realizing that we have to tender it. That's what I'd like to see with those three roads. I realize that they, they should be done. But we do have a plan and I agree we should try and stick to our plan as much as we can because we also know sometimes unusual need things happen when we do have to fix a road that wasn't previously on the plan for some strange reason. Yes, and so may I suggest counsel to the mayor and taking Councilor Blake Wright and Sean Bell's comments. Uh, and I will just speak on those roads. So Jessica we already discussed Beeline Road. And the 65,000, the reason the 65,000 isn't enough 
is what has to be done to do a shoulder of a rope into the full cap joint, and you have to cut into the rope. So that's why it came in higher. We didn't do it, and we moved our money to another place last year. with 65 pounds doesn't do it. What happens with that road, even going with a higher amount, only a limited amount of contractors have the capability of doing proper step joint and making the road effect. So that's a difficult thing to do. And the green light road, you know, the talk is just extending that for another year. What I would suggest to council, instead of putting that into a reserve for next year, or, or if they just or if you decide that you have to do something. I would suggest to council that you put two hundred thousand dollars into a line for um, capital repair for twenty twenty two, and the reason I would suggest you do that because once you get into lane duct, you can't make the decision that the road has to be done. It's going to it's, it's something that council would be perceived to making a decision that they shouldn't make. So if a road fails, you have $200,000 already in your budget. If there's going to have to be a report to council, so you could veto the road, which wouldn't be a bad thing. But if the road fails in September, and we need to do something about it, there's no money available to, to, to do the road. We'll just let council think that one out. So you're just saying one general line item for road capital repairs and for 200,000 yeah. and don't identify any specific road right now. So capital asset repair. So you're just making it not an operation thing, you're making it a capital thing. And you can put a line that there has to be a business case with each one or something like that. That way you're not making a decision that could be perceived as being an election decision. I'm just trying to suggest that to council. And that would be, right now you have almost 265,000. This would be bringing it down to 200,000. Council Robinson. I was just under the impression you were saying that B line, that whatever thing has to be done, had to be done. So, I pay for the mayor. If you're going to do it, you have to do it right. And last year we needed money in another place because and we knew we weren't going to have the money to do that. So the 65,000, which the clerk treasurer moved over, wasn't enough to do that. So if we want to do B line, we're going to have to increase the amount. Can it wait till next year? Um, we all travel B line. It, it's not the end of the world at this time. You are going to lose some more alligatoring along the road, but you're not going, you're, you're not going to lose the road this year. Yeah. Corners are the worst. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. So would council agree to do, did you have a comment, Council Bird? So we can take that 25,000 from the concrete pad and put them three numbers, all the numbers together and put that in one like Andrew said. We, well, you, we could put it all together, absolutely. Or you could put 200,000 in for and the other road two. assets, and then uh, you still have some left for a uh, reserve somewhere else. I'm okay with 200,000. It's like emergency fund. Mm -hmm. So, is council okay with 200,000 in a capital asset uh, uh, mm -hmm. line item? Show of hands. Yeah. And then we'll have to go back up to the surplus of 171008 plus plus the additional funds that we haven't spent down below. Okay. Um, yes. For the mayor, we could have a five minute break. Okay, we can come back with this all up on the board. Okay. Is council okay with taking the funding? Okay. Can you take us offline then, uh, Lord? Okay, so.
staff has made the adjustments and do you want to walk us through it in the show, please? Okay, so, okay, so as directed by council, so the conference had at Earth Road transfer site, the $25,000 has been removed. $25,000 has been removed to let the remaining $30,000 for the contract within. Um, I've also removed the Hundred thousand that was in the budget for Jessup Road, and I have added the line line item for capital asset repair and the amount of two hundred thousand dollars for the location that business space will be required. So, so we are currently sitting with a surplus in the amount of ninety six thousand eight dollars. How's your record so far? Uh, do you think we should increase the amount of um, vehicle fuel for both the fire department and for public works? And just because fuel is on the increase, that's true. It seems, and we've actually budgeted a little lower than what the projected big to projection was. Okay. So if you look at the uh, line item for the vehicle fuel for the fire department, the budget. So we did increase it this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we went up from increased it from six thousand eight hundred to ten thousand. But given that the uh, cost has dramatically increased over the last few weeks, uh, that that does make sense. That is a absolutely. Well, yeah, I was thinking 15. Well, yeah, another five. Yeah, another 15. Right. <laughs> we'll look at the public works. For public works, uh, we budgeted 56,000 for diesel and we have budgeted 17,000 for gas. Uh, Last year, our gas was over 17,000, and the diesel was 36,000. So, I would definitely add additional money into the line items of gas uh, another 5,000. Thank you. That's the last suggestion. And bring the diesel up to 60. That sounds okay. Yeah. And do you think our heating fuel is okay at that? Like your gut feeling on that? Um, that those prices have increased also, and the propane has increased. They all have gone up. So I would, even if we added another two to it. Right. Oh, yes, and they, maybe just a suggestion before I will announce. And keeping in mind that council wants to keep the, the budget um, down. If you don't have those amounts and your cost estimates are on off. Being over in your fuel is something that you can account for. If you, and you may have, you may not spend that 200,000, so you may be able to absorb it in that 200,000 if you don't spend it. But right now, you're you're increasing your, your budget lines. Um, I don't think you know, you're going to be playing for this over in the fuel because that's what you're being safe. I'm just suggesting rather than play with it to leave it where it is, and you may be do. You may be all right, and if you're not, you may be able to absorb it in the 200,000 that you put away for capital. But if you're over in, in your fuel, you're not, you're not going to have an issue accounting for that in the year. Just, just a suggestion. Try to keep it that way. Councilor Buckle. So, through the mayor's question, staff, 
Would it make more sense to put this transfer that 96,000 into a reserve contribution to create a balanced budget? And yes. Mm -hmm. You could transfer it into the, the working funds uh, reserve, and then uh, we would be able to use it for retired. So then we wouldn't have to adjust the fuel prices now. We can just use that as a. Uh, mm -hmm. Or, like uh, Daniel mentioned, um, there's always some play within the, right. the department budget. I would be okay putting in a working capital reserve because at the end of the year, if there's money left, you can you can reallocate it to a specific reserve. That's right. So is council okay with that? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. And I think that council have any other questions on the budget? I'll reread the motion that council accepts the budget information as presented and that the clerk treasurer make the changes as directed. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank So item 9.1 is part of the non-action items. I have a motion that correspondence items 9.1.1 to 9.1.7 be accepted as information. Can I get a little bit of second, please? Moved by Councillor Burns, seconded by Councillor Robinson. Questions or comments? Seeing none, Councillor Buckwalt? Yes. Councillor Burns? Yes. Councillor Robinson? Yes. Councillor Rekha Yes. Councilor Rekha yes. And yes, that's great. Thank you. And that brings us to bylaws. So I have a motion now, therefore, the Council of North Okona will be forced to enact the following bylaws. Number 2022-08, a bylaw to provide for interim tax levies. Number 2022-09, a bylaw to authorize execution of the agreement. And bylaw 2022-10, a bylaw to authorize execution of the agreement. This be read a first and second time this first day of February 2020. Can I get a moment in a second? I'll move by Councilor Robinson, seconded by Councilor Burns. Councilor Buckwell? Yes. Councilor Burns? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Reckon Schoenfeld? Yes. Uh, yes. Harry, thank you. <coughs> and that brings us to are there any matters of urgency? Any notices of motion? Reports from committees were included. Upcoming meetings and unfinished business. So February 8th, 2022 is our public budget presentation at 7 p.m. And February 15th at 7 p.m. is our regular council meeting. I have a motion that council move into closed session yeah. for oh sorry. There's uh, the meeting with Coach of Army Library. Was there a date for that in time yet? Not scheduled yet, no. Not scheduled yet. Okay. Thank you. So I have a motion that council move into closed session for one proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality and local board, and three personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees. Can I get a little bit of second and moved by Council Robinson, seconded by Council Buckwald. Council Buckwald? Yes. Council Burns? Yes. Council Robinson? Yes. Council Wright and Council? Yes. And yes, and that's at 825 p.m. Then I will 
need a motion to uh, come to the close. Uh, moved by Councillor Byrne, seconded by Councillor Byrne. Uh, come out close at 8 58 p.m. Councillor Buckle? Yes. Councillor Byrne? Yes. Councillor Robinson? Yes. Councillor Edward Torco? Yes. And yes, it's uh, closed. I have a motion that Council authorizes the CAO to investigate the feasibility to contract municipal services. Can I get a little bit of seconder? Moved by Councilor Rachel Schoenfeld, seconded by Councilor Burns. Councilor Buckwell? Yes. Council Burns? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Rachel Schoenfeld? Yes. And yes, that's very Thank you. I have a motion that Council approves the Egan Bowen District Senior Needs Association grant application in the amount of 5000 and further grants an additional 1000 I got a mover in a second. Moved by Councillor Buckwald, seconded by Councillor Rankin Schoenfeld. Councillor Buckwald? Yes. Councillor Burns? Yes. Councillor Robinson? Yes. Councillor Rankin Schoenfeld? Yes. And yes, it's carried. Thank you. <clears throat> and motion of council approves the base bass tournament grant application for the use of the Biederman boat launch on July 23rd, <clears throat> 2022. And then moved in the seconder, moved by Councilor Robinson, seconded by Councilor Buckwall. Councilor Buckwall? Yes. Councilor Burns? Yes. Councilor Robinson? Yes. Councilor Ray Kishonko? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Item number 17 is our confirmatory bylaw. I have a motion at bylaw 2022 11, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council for February 1st, 2022. You got a first and second time this first day of February 2022. And then move in a second, and moved by Councillor Buckwald, seconded by Councillor Mikey Schoenfeld. Councillor Buckwald? Yes. Councillor Gertz? Yes. Councillor Robinson? Yes. Councillor Riker Schoenfeld? Yes. And yes. And it's been around a third time and finally passed this first day of February 2022. I have a motion that this February 1st, 2022, regular meeting of council adjourns at 9 p.m. We have a move in a second, moved by Councillor Burke, seconded by Councillor Robinson. Councillor Buckwald? Yes. Councillor Burke? Yes. Councillor Robinson? Yes. Councillor Reggie Schoenfeld? Yes. Any yes. Thank you very much. You're adjourned.